So here's something I don't think I've ever done on this channel. I'm going to be talking about my 12 most hyped movies. Well, 12 movies I'm most hyped for entering the new year. So, yeah. Um, I had Instead of 10 movies, I bumped it up to 12 films. And don't get me wrong. There are other movies that I'm very in excited to see. I'm very interested. There's a lot of other movies I'm interested to see. But for the most part, I was just like... Yeah, I, I'm more interested in these films. Uh, like, these are the 12 I'm, I like are my must-watch. Like, of these, of those movies, of all these movies, these are the 12 are my must-watch. Like, these are the, the 12 that are on my must-watch. And as always, if you think a movie... Or, and also, it's kind of up in the air. And also, I kind of cheated on one of the roles by putting two movies. I put two movies in one spot. It'll, it'll make sense when I, uh, when I further explain it. And as always, you know, comment below, let me know what your top 12, uh, or, yeah, top 12 m movies you're most excited for this year. Anyway, let's get started with my first one, and that is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Why is Transformers Rise... Now, keep in mind, the list is subjective. Why is it at 12? Well, while I... Uh, the, tr the trailer did make me hyped, and, ex and Bumblebee has made me excited for Transformer movies again... I'm still worried. Like, I'm still, like, the jilted lover who was, like, who got back together with their abusive ex and is like, okay, you're improving, but I don't know if you'll lapse again. It's literally like that. Like, that's that's what we're looking at, right? That's the situation we're in right now, is that Bumblebee was really good, and while they're showing improvement with these films, you know, six, seven movies of, of Bayformers is still a stain. One mistake, I mean, one good thing, while it was really good, does not change that. Like, it, it, like you really have to do some serious effort to write this ship. So that's what I'm hoping Beast, you know, um, Rise of the Beast real, is going to do. I'm keeping my expectations at medium, but it is really cool to see, you know, auto, you know the, uh, the, op, uh, the Maximals in live action. Anyway, um, yeah, so there you go. Number 11 is Cocaine Bear. This trailer, the trailer alone was like, yeah, we know what this movie is and we're, you're damn sure gonna like it. I'm always a sucker for creature, for animal attack films. Crawl was one of my favorite movies when it came out. I wanted to like Beast this year, but that turned out like, nope. I saw Beast with, uh, I saw Beast and I was like, that's a heavy nope right there. So I'm hoping Cocaine Bear is just as insane and wild as the trailer makes it out to be. Like, that's what I'm really hoping, is that it's just this wild, crazy film about a bear who did fucking cocaine. I also, I, I want to put this out in the internet. I want someone to add in clips of Dr. Roxo, the rock and roll clown who does cocaine with the bear. Like, have Dr. Roxo, like, voicing the bear. That would, I want that. Like, I'm Dr. Bearzo. I do cocaine! <laughs> Some crazy shit like that. So, yeah, cocaine bear. Like and the whole internet just blew up about cocaine bear, and I was like, this is gonna be fun. Like this, this is gonna be fun. I'm hoping it's gonna be fun at least. Next up, at now we get into the top tens, and at number ten we have a film of a of a a trailer. Well, I saw the trailer for a film I wasn't even aware was gonna be a thing, called Sixty Five. 65 literally is just a remake of Planet of Dinosaurs. That's, it's really, that's what it is. Um, I saw the trailer and I was like, this has all the makings of, like, um, cowboys and aliens, but it does look fun. And when's the last time we had a dinosaur film that wasn't Jurassic Park, or, or, you know, part of the Jurassic Park franchise, in our, you know, on screen? Like, when was the last time that was a thing? Like, when was the last time we ever saw a film like that, a, a non-Jurassic Park dinosaur film on uh, on screen? I'll tell you, fucking never. Like, fucking long time, that's when. So, yeah, I'm very interested in in this film. Could it bomb? It does look like it, it might not be good. I will be real with you. It may not be good, but it looks fucking fun. I'm hoping, I just, well, that's what I want. I want fun for my dinosaur spaceman movie. Yeah. Also, if you haven't guessed, I, I did write this all down so I wouldn't forget any of them. Next up at number nine, John Wick, uh, John Wick 4. The John Wick films are always fun. Like, I really enjoy all the... This universe is gonna be, is really great, and I can't wait for the spinoff. 
um, and the TV series. The John Wick universe is really cool, and I'm kind of hoping that the violent, like non sequitur. I am hoping that the John uh, that the um, Violent Night film, like a, the, with Violent Night, gets a film franchise. I'm hoping we get to see more of like kind of like what they did with John Wick, where they're expanding the universe with each film little by little, and also showing like the other holidays, like kind of like like do John Wick but for the holidays. I thought that would be kind of neat. Anyway, so John and yes, while it is low, it's still I'm it's one of the movies I'm very excited for. Because there were a lot of other films I'm very I'm a lot excited for more. Anyway, so moving on now to um, this is an this is gonna be an interesting one. Like this is gonna be a very fascinating one for most people. And people are gonna go, really, that one? Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, a biopic film about op about um, Oppenheimer, the man who helped create the nuclear bombs um, that bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, played by Killian Murphy, directed by Christopher Nolan. Done. Like I like I was sold when they were when Nolan said I'm doing an Oppenheimer biopic with Universal, and I was like, so that's gonna be a movie I'm very I'm gonna be very excited to watch. Um, I really love Killian Murphy as an actor. I think this is a very it's going to be a very visceral film. Like, I think it's going to be a visceral and brutal film to watch because Oppenheimer should not... Re like, Oppenheimer is a very complex um, character, you know, person in history. So I hope they really convey that in this film. Like, I really am hoping they do convey that to s in some extent to this film. So, yeah. There you go. Oppenheimer. Um, next up is, at number seven, we have two films in one. And you may be thinking, well, that's cheating. It is, and it's, and it's, also, it's my list, so, whatever. Um, but there's a reason for that. Because we have not one, but two Dracula films this year. We literally are getting two Dracula films this year, and I was like, to quote, uh, you know, uh, to quote uh, the great Arliss Loveless from Wild Wild West, we'll take them both! <laughs> um... That's when I, when I can't decide on something, I go, we'll take them both. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's why I decided to put them. because. But, and here's the thing. They're both very juxtaposed because I'm talking about the Demeter and Renfield. The Demeter is a dark horror film. Um, is a dark, is this dark film. And if you don't know what Demeter, the Demeter is, it hasn't really got a lot. The Demeter is basically set during the events of Dracula, where Dracula was on the boat, killing everyone on on the ship of the Demeter at, on his trip from from Romania to London. This is basically that part of the book that we never we only got through little excerpts in the book. So that's kind of so that's what it is. It's like this. It's like Alien on a boat, and I really like that. I think that's gonna be really cool. Where Drac where Dracula is gonna be like stalking the crew members. I think this is gonna be like a neat um, closed in closed space horror film. Renfield, however, is going to be a bloody horror comedy um, with Nicolas Cage's Dracula. Because Nick Cage is Dracula. Uh, that's all I really need to say, right? Like, just saying Nick Cage is Dracula. Like, everyone will go, oh, I get it now. <laughs> anyway. So, that, so there you go. If I was to pick which one I'm more excited for, I would say the Demeter, because I really, like, the, the premise for this story sounds really enticing and it's not it would be really cool to see dracula be scary again like i'd really like to see a very horror based dracula film again anyway um so there you go moving on now to number six is shazam 2 i am i'm i'm curious about aquaman 2 and i have no fucks to give about the flash i'm not gonna go out of my way to go watch the flash because let's not forget that ezra miller is a piece of shit Let's not forget at all that he was he's a total that Ezra Miller, uh, Ezra Miller was a total piece of shit to to a vast number of people um, kidnapping attempt you know breaking entry I could go on and on so uh, so the only way I'm going to go watch the flash is if someone offers and even then I may say no if there's something better on Aquaman 2 okay and Shazam 2 really like I'm it was more like I'm this is the D the one DC film I'm most interested in because Shazam, I really loved Shazam, the film. I really loved the first film, and this really looks like it's going to carry over that kind of fun to it. But at the same time, like, 
these movies might these DC films might might not even matter because James Gunn is is looking to tear this down to the studs and bring us a new universe. Hopefully a more connected one. We are apparently going to get more information. Um, side note on that. Um, I read somewhere that James Gunn is going to reveal like his whole um, thing about like the whole new movie pr premise and whole movie pitch he did to DC and reveal it all. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, Shazam 2. Now moving on to the top five. And starting off, we have Scream 6. Scream 5 was such a damn good film, and it was such a surprise to me, because I'm not the biggest Scream fan. And Scream 6 looks like it's going to be what Jason Takes Manhattan wanted to be. Um, I feel like this is also going to be like the Halloween kills of the franchise, where people are going to be very divisive about this film. Because you always have that second film that is always divisive among fans. But I do have a lot of faith in it. I do have a lot of faith in the... Um, group behind this, and I think they're going to do well. So there you go. So Scream 6 is uh, number 5. Next up at number 4 is Indiana Jones 5. Indiana Jones 5, it could, like, Crystal, you can't go far, you know, you can't go down further down the crap hole than uh, Crystal Skull, but you can definitely go up, especially with the director behind this. I was um, mildly interested in Indiana in the fifth Indiana Jones movie. I was like, okay, that does sound like a cash grab, but I'm always a sucker for an Indiana Jones adventure movie. And this is going to be Harrison Ford's last ride. And to top it off, we literally have James Mangold, the guy who has given us fucking gold, literal gold. I'm not joke. That's that wasn't even a joke. Um, literal fucking gold on each film, like the Johnny Cash biopic. Fucking Logan and the Wolverine and Ford v Ferrari, which I really fucking loved. Um, so yeah, when James the second uh, the reason why it jumped so high on my most anticipated list was because James Mangold was attached to it. He's one of the directors I'm always excited to see what they have. So when James Mangold was was announced for this film, I was like. Oh, so we're not playing games. Okay. We're not putting Joe Schmo on this. We're actually putting a fucking competent director on this film. So that's what got my uh, what really piqued my interest. Now we're at the top 3 and funny enough, it is a third film. My most anticipated Marvel film, Guardians 3. Not to say I'm not excited for like the Marvels and Ant-Man Quantumania, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, and I am interested in those films. But the reason why Guardians 3 is my most anticipated mar of the Marvel films is because it's the end of an era, really. It's the end of this era of Guardians and the end of James Gunn working at with Marvel Studios. And I really do feel like we're going to get emotionally kicked in the dick repeatedly. Uh, like I said before in my, uh, cr my review for the Christmas special, it really does feel like um, it was the nice feel-good moment before we get the dick punch um, from James Gunn. Um, the trailer looked really good, involving the High Evolutionary, and this this is going to be the last this is the last ride for those characters and James Gunn in this universe before he goes to do a rebuild job a rebuild job or reboot job on DC Comics. So yeah, I'm it got the more I thought about, it, I was like, yeah, I am really excited for the for this franchise. I really am excited to see how this all ends, and maybe we'll see a new area of era of Guardians. Um, in the future. So, yeah. And, honestly, number one and number two were really competing, but honestly, if I'm being real, they could bo it both intertwines because I'm bo these are the two most films I'm most excited for. So you could flip one or two. And at number two, we have Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise is was the one movie I've been excited about forever. A new Evil, De Evil Dead film um, set in a metropolitan area and it's produced and looked over like watched over by like a hawk by um sam raimi and bruce campbell is enough to make me want to go yeah i want to see this movie i've looked at all the stills it looks really good i am very excited for this film and i'm so glad zaslov didn't cut this film because i was really concerned when they said they're not when i didn't get any news I was like, oh god, did they cancel the film like they did Batgirl? And no, it's getting a theatrical release in spring. So I hope we're going to get some trailers and whatnot 
coming soon. I really do hope we get some trailers. At least this month. I'm hoping for some time this month we get our first trailer or teaser. But yeah. Anyway, so there you go. Evil Dead Rise. And number one, you guys already probably know, have figured out by now. Um, this is this is my most anticipated film for 2023. It was my most it was my favorite film in 2018. Spider-Man Across the Universe. Yeah. I have a lot of hope for this film. I really loved Into the Spider-Verse. Across the Spider-Verse looks fantastic. I love the art styles. I love all of that, and I love the story. I'm really excited. Like, I, I, the one thing I hope they don't do is overshadow it with so many Spider characters. Yes, we are getting um, Toei Spider-Man and Spider-Man Unlimited. We're also getting my boy, spectacular Spider-Man Peter Parker in this film. But I'm hoping this movie doesn't depend on... Um, just spider cameos. Like, I'm hoping... That's what I'm hoping it doesn't do, is just... let it's, it Maybe it could be like a Where's Waldo. Like, look at all these Spider-Men. I know that character. I know that character. But I don't want it to be just full... Like, overshadowed by all the Spider-Man characters. But I am... I'm very excited, and I'm... It's my, it's my most anticipated movie. So, yeah, you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of this list? Like I said, if you think a, a film should be higher or lower on it... Just, uh, yeah, it was just my list, and I have no problem if you think... That's totally fine. It's just my opinion. And you guys just let me know in the comments below, what are your 12 movies you're most excited for this year? Anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.